going on YouTube? It's Vinny here and uh, boy do I have some uh, issues to show you guys today. Alright guys, so apologize in advance for the screaming kids in the background. Can't do anything about it. I live in a uh, very populated neighborhood with a lot of kids in it. Um, but I'm going to try to explain this really quick. So uh, a couple weeks ago, the Subaru started having a really mushy, weird feeling clutch pedal. Did a lot of research, didn't find much on a 2006 WRX or anything between 02 and 07, other than the clutch pedal assembly cracking. So of course, that's where I started. I did find my clutch pedal assembly was broken. And with that being broken and me still driving it not knowing, um, that began to create another issue that I do want to show you guys here today. So um, I already have a lot of things apart on the car. I'm not going to be sh really showing you guys how to take things apart today. This is a very in-depth job and they don't really have anything else out there about how to do this. So as doing a bunch of other research, after I've kind of diagnosed as to what my issue is, I haven't found anything further other than the clutch pedal assembly being broken. So I'm gonna show you guys right here. I already have the clutch pedal assembly out. If you're looking at it, you know, if you were to sit in a car, this is the clutch pedal, this is the brake pedal, and this whole thing they consider like a clutch slash brake pedal assembly. And when you look at this on these, basically uh, they tend to crack along these shafts right here usually on this inner section mine seemed like it started to crack up here and as well as over here right in there up here and it kind of broke over there so this whole top piece is really not going to stay on so um, that has to be replaced it just so happens though that i checked online for replacement parts and they do sell this also, that's not the main issue though with mine. The main issue you might notice is right here. That's this ear, little, this little ear piece that is supposed to be welded on there like so. This is where your clutch master cylinder comes through. It's supposed to look like this and the clutch master cylinder rod comes through the middle and will attach to this little piece right here, which is also attached under this tube, there's like a shaft that moves when you move your clutch pedal. So what I've done is went to my local Subaru dealership and I placed an order for a part on here. I have it right here, it's called the Bracket Complete or Complete CP. I'm gonna leave a link in the video showing you exactly what I ordered with the part number. That's what it looks like. Bracket Complete Bracket CP. The part that I ordered will fit an 02 to 07 WRX clutch pedal assembly. And it looks like it's gonna be this tubing attached to like this Y bracket. And it's going to unbolt from what looks like a 12 millimeter right here. 
and then hopefully this tube will slide off. It looks like I'm gonna have to bang this pin out and take this little uh, ear lever off. And then once I've removed that, the whole uh, tubing should remove and then I'd be able to uh, attach the new tubing, bolt it back in, put my the ear on and then the pin back through it and it should be good to go. Um, I did inspect the rest of this and it did not find any other damage to it. So now with that, I'm going to show you guys the rest of the damage that's the real problem in the car. I don't want you guys to freak out, but my whole dash is gone. Whole dash, um, there's actually more that I would have to remove, but uh, up until this point, I think I might not have to do it. So let me show you what had happened when the clutch pedal assembly broke. This little ear broke off and then I was left with this. Every time I pushed in my clutch, it was flexing this whole thing. And since it's also cracked up here and you know, it's all broken, this part, if you look up in there, right where the clutch master cylinder goes through in that hole, it began to push a hole through there on the left. As you guys can see on that left side right there is where it started to actually rip the firewall. So that damage right there on the left side where that bolt goes through, that's where I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix. I have not found anybody else running into this exact issue online with any good details of much. So this is going to be a, a first time thing, at least for me, as far as what I found online. My first initial thought um, on how to go about fixing this would be to weld. But then I realized, you know, we're working, I talked to a lot of different people um, about this, just picking their brain, seeing what they would have done or what they've ran into before with firewall fixing. And welding is risky, expensive, and kind of seems like too much for this. That was my original plan was to go in and weld, fix that thing up make it look pretty and make sure it's nice and structurally sound and stiff. But now I've read a lot online doing research on like how to repair stuff like this, um, especially like on a firewall. And what I came up with was a structural adhesive that I'm going to be attempting to use. And I'm gonna team that up with a plate of sheet metal. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. And what I have made here is one of two sheet metal plates that are gonna be glued over that hole on the inside and on the outside. These bolts that are going through with these white washers and another bolt on the other side, this is just gonna be used as clamps for when I do have to glue it on. I'm gonna be making another one of these in a few moments, so stay tuned to see that made. Um, but before I make that, I do wanna just show you the outside. What you see here on this side is where it ripped. You guys can see on that right side over here, that's where it pushed through. I have since removed the clutch master cylinder right here out of the way. And I began to bend the right side of this back straight as I could from the inside and the outside. Next, I'm going to sand this down and make it ready to be glued back together with steel sheets on both sides. So here's one of the plates that I made. I labeled it top, passenger side, driver side, and bottom. So I know which way it fits when we're placing it over the hole. So once you get your plate cut, this is just the one for the outside. Now I'm going to cut the same piece identically for the inside. May have to shape it just a little bit differently if there's anything in the way, but this is what it's gonna look like on the outside. That's gonna be glued right over those holes to make sure that any of that firewall that's behind that's not gonna get pushed through and fully rip and then render the car useless to drive again. Now we're on the inside of the car looking at where the clutch pedal assembly meets the clutch master cylinder here. And I just wanna show you guys that this is what the plate will look like glued on the inside as well. So how did I come up with getting the measurements and making this 
metal piece that's gonna fit on both sides. Come on, airplane, Jesus. All right, so you guys are probably wondering how did I get the measurements to make this piece? Um, this is gonna be the plate that I just showed you guys is gonna go on the inside and the outside of the firewall. To make that metal piece, I used pieces of paper. When I had everything out, got a tape measure, just got a general idea of the space that I had to work with. And um, I came up with these cutout pieces here. So the measurements that I came up with for this piece is four and a quarter wide and three and a half tall. Now you can make it a little smaller than that. So that's kind of a little bit what I did. It's not exactly four and a quarter. I have mine at about maybe four and one eighth. And about, this is still about three and a half inches. The holes here, these are seven sixteenths. That's gonna match exactly what's on your firewall. And this is a two inch hole in the middle. That's where your clutch master cylinder is gonna sit through. So you guys are probably wondering, what kind of metal am I using for this? So I ran to Home Depot and I picked myself up some 22 gauge sheet metal. It's just plain steel, uh, bare, there's nothing on it, very shiny. And I believe that if I use structural adhesive on this 22 gauge, on this, against the firewall on the inside as well as the outside, and clamp them together, I believe that that should be strong enough to fully support that clutch pedal pressure, you know, from constantly in and out. So this feels pretty thick and I didn't want to go too thick, then have issues with like clutch pedal travel and stuff. So I thought this might be thin enough and I do have an adjustment, which I can show you guys later that I'm going to adjust on the clutch pedal assembly when I put it back in. Now we're just going to flip over to some clips of me creating one of these steel plates.
right guys, so what I just did was make a duplicate of the first bracket that I had. The reason I have two of these metal plates is because one's gonna be on the inside of the car and one's gonna be on the outside. And next, what I'm gonna show you is the clamp that we're gonna use for once we glue these on the inside and the outside. So once you have these plates and you get that structural adhesive, now you need to figure out a clamping mechanism to hold these plates on either side of the firewall together with the adhesive on the insides of them, right? You wanna, cause we're gonna try to glue them there so it strengthens that area where the clutch master cylinder goes through. So my clamping mechanism that I came up with is to use basically just a bolt through system with some wide washers up here. And I'm using these spacers because I don't have a nut that can go all the way down to the bottom. So I just made these plastic spacers. This is a 7 16th bolt, two inch diameter washer. I drilled the hole to 7 16th so the bolt would fit through. And these are the holes that I had drilled through these washers and these plastic washers just to make them fit. So this is gonna go on one side. It's gonna go through one side of the plate. Then you're gonna have the firewall here. And then on the other side, on the inside, you're gonna have your other plate, right? They're gonna be together. Then you're gonna get another washer for the inside. And then you're just gonna use your spacers so you get the nut on here. And as I tighten this, you see how the nut's not all the way down. So the more I tighten it, the more it's clamping together. And the same is gonna go for the other side. Let me quickly attach these. It'll look just like that. And then the firewall will, of course, be in between both of those plates. So with these clamped together, you can see cuts aren't exact. I'm just gonna get a little grind tool in there, file it out a little bit, make sure at least the center hole's even. These bolt holes will match up regardless because I actually drilled them a little bit wider. I used a half inch drill bit, which is just about the width of what's in the car. So now the next step, once you've figured out that you have a good clamping system to glue these on, we should head over to the car and then sand down and prep the area where these plates will be glued to. So what you're looking at is the clutch master cylinder hole right here. And I'm gonna be sanding this down to be able to glue the plate to it. So what I wanna first do is actually attach the plate and then trace the outline of the plate to the firewall so I know exactly what areas are gonna need to be sanded. So I'm gonna get my plate with the bolts in it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Everything's lined up as good as you can get it. All right, now I'm just gonna remove the bolts and the plate. Wonderful. Now that's the area that we're gonna have to sand. Now I'm gonna also go on the inside of the vehicle and trace out the same thing. All right guys, and that's what it looks like traced on the inside of the car. That's the area that we're gonna have to sand inside of, and that's where the plate's gonna be glued to. It's not pretty, but it gives me just a good idea of where that plate's gonna sit. And of course, up at the top, there's that foam. I'm just gonna probably cut that out or move it out of the way somehow, but yeah. All right guys, so this is gonna be attempt number one with the whiz wheel. So this is about as far as I could get with the whiz wheel for the inside. And this is as far as I could get with the whiz wheel in the engine bay. Now I'm just gonna get a light grit sandpaper and finish off any spots that I didn't fully get.
All right, guys, and we're back. It's a couple days later. Today, my neighbors are getting their roof replaced. So you're gonna hear some hammering. You're gonna hear a ton of people apologize in advance. So we're gonna get into it. So I'm gonna show you guys what we just got in the mail. It looks like we got our impact resistant structural adhesive that's by 3M. The number is 07333. I got some brushes, mixing tube. This is like a tube that basically goes on the end of here. It's like a mixing nozzle. I'll put a link down in the description for all that kind of stuff. And then I got the 3M gun. It is the 08571. And this is the gun that is used for pretty much most of these 3M shaped cartridges. And then the special order part for the clutch pedal assembly that broke came in. This is called the bracket complete. So if you guys need to know this part number, you can pause it or check in the description. It'll be down there as well. And here is the old bracket complete that I just removed from my clutch pedal assembly. You can see it's cracked there, there. Flip it around. So basically like this whole thing's breaking off along the top. And if you look down here, the real issue, right where my pinky's at, we're missing a stud. So that broke off. Here's the new one with both. Then I also realized that I needed to get another part. That is this, so I ordered these are called uh, bushing A and bushing B's. I'll put links in the description for those as well. These basically will sit in the end here. And then there's another one that goes over here, which I have to figure out how to remove. But it's that's this one right here you guys see sliding. So we'll get to that once we're done gluing everything together. I just want to show you guys what this plate's going to look like on the engine bay facing side with the clamps that I'm using. So you guys can see the two bolts bolted through, one on each side. And this is what the inside's going to look like. You see the bolts on both sides with the fat washers and then the, the white nylon spacers and then that nut on the end. Notice the uh, plunger size difference. The small ones on the inside, bigger ones on the outside. And that's the reason that the cartridge goes in this way. Now we're gonna purge it. Alright guys, so we got the plate in there, 
and I have the structural adhesive all behind the plate against the firewall and around the edges as best as I could. This is the inside plate with the structural adhesive holding it. And then you guys can see those two bolts that are going through the holes that's clamping it right now. I clamped everything together and then I got a brush and smoothed everything out. And then I also made sure up along the top to fill in that area because it kind of indents on the firewall. So I'm just gonna fill it in with this structural adhesive to you know, hopefully let that bond as best as possible. I tried to cover over the corners as well, make it a little thicker around those areas and around the edges to make sure that seals good. And on the bottom, I got it as best as I could. It's not gonna to matter too much because once the master cylinder right here is bolted on, I mean, it's gonna be clamping the plates together regardless. So about every 20 minutes, I'm just gonna rotate these bolts, just spin them around to make sure that they're not getting stuck in there. So now that I have the plates glued on to the firewall, the 3M adhesive calls for eight hours of clamp time and 24 hours of cure time. So we'll be back later on after this cures up. All right guys, so it's the next day. I let the adhesive dry on the firewall and those metal plates overnight. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. So this is what the plate in the engine bay looks like after the adhesive has dried. And this is what it looks like inside of the car. Now I began removing the nut and the two nylon washers off of the ends. I'm gonna have to unstick those two nylon washers as well as the silver washers on there. So I have removed the bolt going through as well as the washer that was stuck on the holes there. To remove them completely off, you just get a small pair of pliers and you'll go in and grab the washer like so and then peel it off. All right, that's now what the inside looks like with the bolt clamps removed. All right guys, now that that's all dried up and everything and we have the clamps off, I'm gonna get a round file and a Scotch-Brite pad and just clean this up a little bit. So I'm gonna clean these holes on each side with this file. And then with the Scotch-Brite pad, I'm gonna lightly go over the entire plate very gently just to prep it for paint. All right guys, so I grinded out those holes, smoothed everything out, and got a little Scotch-Brite sand on there. Next, I'm just gonna get some rubbing alcohol, wipe down both sides, then I'm gonna tape everything off to begin the paint process. Here we have the engine bay side taped off, ready to get painted. And here we have the interior side taped off, ready to get painted. Now, this is just the best that we're gonna get. I'm not gonna take any more stuff out of the car to paint this. So, I just ended up kind of using way too much tape. All right, now we're gonna go to paint this. I'm using an OmniFill Premium Master Blend. Um, Grimspeed makes this. It's a Grimspeed Rally Blue. Here's the numbers. And yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start spraying. Pretty heavy first coat, but it'll have to do. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the inside. I'm not gonna be able to film this part, but I'll show you guys what the result looks like afterwards. All right, guys, that's the first coat of paint that's going on the outside. We're just gonna let that dry now, and then I'm gonna go and apply probably two or three more coats. Just wanna make sure that it's fully sealed and that it's not gonna get corroded down the road. All right, and here's the first coat for the inside of the car. Again, going to let this one dry and then apply probably two or three more coats to prevent corrosion in the future. So this is the second coat of paint. Now I'm just going to wait for this one to dry. I'm going to go ahead and spray the inside as well. And then that one's going to dry and we'll be back after they're dried. All right, guys, it's the next day. Um, I'm going to rip all the tape and everything off, and we're going to see what the paint finally looks like. All right, so here you guys have the final product inside of the engine bay. You can see over here on the left, it's a little dirty, but this is the World Rally Blue. Overall, it came out really good and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think that's gonna get any corrosion or anything. All right, now I'm gonna start ripping all this tape off in here and we'll check that out. Okay, and that's what the inside looks like. Very happy with how that turned out as well. You guys can see every area is covered and it's not gonna get any corrosion on the inside either. Now that we have the firewall all back together and painted, that's complete. Next, we're gonna work on the clutch pedal assembly. I had ordered some parts from Subaru. I got the bracket complete and then I got some bushings that are gonna go in. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that next. All right, so here's the clutch pedal assembly. I wanna show you guys, this is the rod that goes through that attaches to your clutch pedal. This is your brake pedal. So there's these bushings, these things that I had to order. These tend to probably wear down and break by the time you're replacing anything on this. And just so you guys could see, there's a broken one. So I'm gonna be sliding this new bracket complete on to the clutch pedal assembly and there's going to be one of these smaller bushings right here that goes on the end of this tube. So I'm just gonna set my camera up over here while I kind of reassemble this and I'll briefly explain to you what I had to do once it's all done. And just so you guys know, as I reassemble this, it's always good to have the whole diagram up on your phone of exactly where everything goes. So then you can make sure you're doing it right on here. So once it's back together, you don't have to take it back apart. I'll put a link in the description for this as well as the parts, you know, that I ordered from here because it gives you all the part numbers too. So you're welcome. All right, here is the bushings for the brake pedal. It's important to make sure that these are all flush on both sides. So actually, I took out this whole uh, clutch pedal first and then attached this bracket in.
you want to make sure that nothing is binding up in here and it looks good to me that click noise you hear is the brake switch up here but other than that no noise during normal brake travel that's the old one there's the new one now might be the time to add just a little bit more now i'm going to insert it back in so i'm going to pull this shaft up a little bit and then get that bushing in there first like that push it down flush and then this brake pedal should slide in place just like so Okay, so we have the pedal assembly almost fully together. We have the new bushings in for the brake pedal, the new bushing up here for where the clutch pedal is, and we have the new bracket complete installed. The last part of it is we have one more bushing, another one of those small bushings we use down here on the clutch pedal area. Again, links will be in the description for these. Okay, and what you guys are going to want to do is move this center rod around and you see how this has an opening you're going to sit it in there and try to pinch this sh this uh, bushing together and get it in there be careful not to uh, damage the bushing as you do this patience is key be very gentle All right, and there it is, all the way in and flush. Next, we're gonna install this little lever piece on the end. We're gonna have to install these pins that go in inside the center. You kind of press them in. I ordered just a new one. There's the part number. This is just the pin. It actually comes with the other one inside of it. I'll show you guys how to put that in now. So I got the pin in there. First, just before it's about to be in that lip right there. So you guys can see that pin is equally through both sides. Now I'm gonna get the smaller pin and that goes right through there, like that. All right, the pin looks like it's in there good on both sides. Now the last thing is the spring that we took off for the clutch. You have to get the spring and compress it a little bit like this, like squeeze it down to get that pin to get in there like that. Now, once you have that pin in, don't forget your little, little half moon clip. I'm not sure if I showed you guys taking that off, so just don't forget to put that little half moon clip thingy back on. It goes right on the back of that pin in the groove. There's a groove in there. Make sure it clicks in. Or just drop it on the floor like, like I did. Now once you have the spring back on the clutch pedal, this is gonna spring up like that. That should work correctly. Nice. 
So here you guys have the full clutch pedal assembly all together and fixed. We installed the new bracket complete and we also installed the bushings that go inside of the brake pedal assembly. So now the only other thing we have to do would be to install some kind of piece of rubber here, which I'll get around to doing that eventually. Um, and other than that, we can go and throw this back in the vehicle. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do next. So that pretty much wraps everything up with the clutch pedal assembly and all the replacement parts I needed for that. So I'll be back with you guys after I get everything back installed. All right guys, and that's pretty much it. Everything is back together in the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys briefly just what it looks like and then we're gonna start it up so you guys can hear it. All right, so this is the entire engine bay back together. can't really see much but everything is working properly operating normally just gonna take a look inside clutch pedal assembly is working great I'm just gonna start her up Overall, I would say this job would probably take at least three to four days considering you have to take the vehicle apart, you have to glue it, you have to let it dry, and then you have to paint it, let it dry, and then reassemble everything. So I would say at least three to four days to do this job normally. The more time you give yourself, the better because you'll allow the adhesive to cure longer and the paint to dry better. If I had to give any advice for anyone doing this job is make sure you have a daily driver while you do this because it's going to take some time. You might have to wait for parts, you might have to wait for supplies and materials. But overall, it really wasn't too bad if you take your time. So if you guys have any questions on this job, leave them down in the comments and I will get back to you. Um, I appreciate you guys for sticking around and watching through this. This was probably one of the worst things that's ever happened to my Subaru. Um, but I am happy to have fixed it and made it even better than it was before. All right, guys, and there you have it. That's how to uh, fix your clutch pedal assembly and your firewall on your Subaru. Um, I appreciate you guys watching through this whole video if you stuck around. And um, if you guys have any questions, leave your questions down in the comments. I will get back to you. If this video helped you guys out, leave a like. And if you guys want to see more of this kind of content, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.